Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Michael Andrew. Um, so Michael, I saw you in Des Moines just, just a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. Take me through what, what your life has been like since then. <laughs> well, training's been great. Um, a little bit of change in the last few days, but since we got home from Iowa, uh, we had an awesome week of training, getting back into it, kind of you know, reassessing what we had learned from racing in Iowa and started to put that into the pool. Um, and then come the new week, it's like, oh, dang, like now we can't do that. So our, our focus has shifted a little bit. Um, the intensity hasn't changed. It's actually almost increased quite significantly. So we're going to focus a lot more on working out in the gym. And then we've moved everything pretty much to the ocean. Um, we're still hopeful that maybe we can get pool time here or there at like a community pool or with someone local. We can swim for like an hour or 30 minutes or whatever, even if it's just to feel the stroke. Um, and if worse comes to worse, we're just going to swim in the ocean without a wetsuit and <laughs> bear, bear the elements. Um, I'm not really worried about where we're at anyway physically. I think, if anything, I can adapt to this really, really well. And it'll more be just a fun experiment, a fun challenge to kind of overcome. I think my only fear is how long am I going to have to adapt to this new form um, and what's the future hold? Because I realized like Iowa was my last meet as a 20 year old. So, you know, like I wasn't expecting that. I was ready for mission to be the last one. And, you know, for mission, we had new goals and new plans and race strategies and things that we want to work on. Um, so all that kind of, you know, a wrench has been thrown in that, which is interesting. But, you know, being an elite athlete, we got to learn to roll with the punches. And this is a pretty big uh, southpaw hitting us in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Um, so what are, 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 are all the pools in your area closed currently? Yeah. So as a, or for, for what I know, um, our Y closed yesterday. It's closed for the next two weeks. Um, okay. probably going to be longer than that, uh, if the curve doesn't drop and then everything else closed well before the Y, our Y had stayed open for a few days. Um, just shut, they shut down their programs, like their aerobics classes and whatever, any like group things, but mm -hmm. they left the pool open. Um, but everything around it was shut down and we could see it was crazy. We, I remember showing up to the parking lot. It was pretty much empty, but the pool was packed. Literally every swimmer from like the SoCal area, Gosh. all the North Coast aquatic swimmers, RSD, like anywhere around the area was swimming there, all the triathletes. Um, and then they quickly shut it down. So, yeah, no, everything's shut down. Um, even now, like we finished our big surf this morning. We went to Cardiff and surfed and um, we were like, oh, well, let's go get burritos or something. <laughs> and we can't because all the restaurants are closed. They're only doing takeout. Um, so pretty interesting i've never experienced anything like this yeah um were the beaches crowded um the surf lineup was pretty crowded so one thing that i love about this area is if people don't have work or i mean even if they do have work and the surf is good they're all out surfing <laughs> um but now that people don't have an excuse everyone's out surfing all the kids are out of school so a lot of people surfing and i mean i feel safe in the ocean i feel like the salt water maybe will kill the bacteria but um Whatever it is, like, you know, I just love being out in the water. But it was freezing. It was cold this morning. It's like 48 degrees. The water's yeah. freezing. So we're all out there, like, just shivering. But, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's my alternative. Now we've kind of moved our training plan to now where we're just trying to get as much surf as possible and then put as much load under the body and try and recover day by day. Um, just stay in shape. Mm -hmm. are, are you able to continue weight training as well now? Yes, yeah, so we're super fortunate. We do have a home gym. It's very makeshift, um, but in my garage, we've got um, our selectorized equipment, so I can still do my my whole weights routine. Um, okay. Nothing crazy, but yeah, so we can still follow on with that, which is awesome because every other gym is closed. Um, yeah. So yeah, we'll still continue to work out. Gym, we've got pull-up bars, everything at home. Uh, and then the only thing we're missing is a pool, which... I mean, in the grand scheme of things, isn't such a big deal right now because we can shift our focus to building more power, um, size, and then the endurance and stuff I can get from paddling in the ocean is going to be great 
Um, I actually also have been looking into either buying a prone paddle board. So where I sit on my knees and paddle and I can kind of simulate a butterfly stroke. I mean, it's not 100% specific because you're not swimming, but right. I think it's working a lot of similar muscles. And so I think come time to where I can get in the pool, I'll probably be stronger than I was before. So I feel like we've got a pretty solid plan and Buddy's letting me borrow his prone board before I buy just to see if it's something I'm interested in. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, so have you found yourself, you know, being at home more often, have you found yourself missing anything or do you, have you really felt a big impact from this, you know, social distancing? Um, not a huge impact. I mean, I'm still like, I'm still hanging out with friends in small groups. Um, We've moved to like if if we're gonna play games, we just play uh, Call of Duty or Fortnite via PS4, and then we just kind of call into each other and talk. Mm-hmm. So that's fine. I mean, it's not a huge change. I think the biggest thing that kind of sucks now is um, I was planning on going to Houston this weekend to visit my girlfriend and her family. Okay. I there's still a chance, but really the risk of flying to Houston. Oh, sorry. We can reconnect it there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, we're still there. Okay. Yeah. So no, my so I was gonna spend the weekend with my girlfriend in Houston and her family. Um, but through the fear of all this and domestic travel being canceled, she flew home in a week earlier. So like, I'm not getting to hang out with her, and I don't know if you know if she's gonna be stuck in Houston for a period of time, or if I could get stuck in Houston if I went. So that's mm-hmm. kind of a a bit of a bummer. Um, but something we deal with, I mean, it's interesting though, too, is like we live in an era where we can all be more connected apart from each other, which is crazy. Um, I was, I was speaking to someone the other day. It was kind of funny actually, is there's so many people that are already homebodies. It's like, you know, we spend all our time in home, social media, FaceTime, game online, whatever. And now when people are saying, oh, social distancing and don't go out. We're like freaking out. It's like your schedule's not changing a whole lot because you already spend most of your yeah. time in your house anyway. <laughs> it's yeah. like do what you can for the next few weeks, let the curve die down, and then hopefully things, you know, can progress so we can start opening stuff again. But it's definitely it's definitely weird. I mean, even the other day I was I drove Destiny to the airport and um, you know, the highway is supposed to be super busy at that time. It's like mm-hmm. nothing. You know, we could fly down the highway and not slow down. It's like, this is really weird, you know? Yeah. And so kind of crazy. Uh, I think part of the problem, too, for me mentally is the other day we, we all got together as a group and watched Contagion. And there were way too many freaky parallels in that movie. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, what's going to happen when the streets are shut down and we're fighting for food? But now I'm, I'm pretty confident that it will, it will blow over. I'm praying for it to blow over. And I guess the next fear is what's going to happen with Olympics and meets that are coming up because, you know, it's fast approaching. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I know. I keep having the the flash of like, you know, what's going to happen when we run out of food? And it's like, okay, dude, we're not going to run out of food. Yeah, no, we won't. have, Have you been to grocery stores lately, though? I haven't. I've decided not to. I mean, I eat pretty simply as long as I've got eggs bacon and meat in the freezer we're good um so i think dad and i we stocked up a bit and our freezer is nice and full uh but yeah i know it's it's crazy we are running low on toilet paper we did (laughs) we did try and go find toilet paper but it's like nowhere it's like golly yeah everyone's like yeah like crapping themselves so much they gotta buy so much (laughs) toilet paper it's like what are you guys doing yeah, that's just absurd. Like, even on Amazon, I looked like, can I just order toilet paper? Nothing. So You really? And you can't order toilet paper on Amazon? No, I, I could, but it's going to be a couple weeks until it gets here. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. all unavailable. That's so, wild. yeah, no, it's really interesting. But, but yeah, we're all good stocked up. Uh, plenty of protein, at least. If I run out of food, I can just eat protein bars and protein. <laughs> eat protein <laughs> yeah. after. <laughs> yeah. You'll just see me, you'll see me swimming in the ocean. I'll be like there trying to spearfish something. 
eating sand. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's it's really interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't really don't know what to think. I, 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 one part of me thinks this is silly, but another part is like, okay, like there is cases and it is contagious and you can catch it. Be careful. And you don't want to, my biggest thing is not spreading it to someone who can't fight it off. Cause I believe, yeah, my system's probably healthy enough to fight it um, or to not even feel symptoms. Right. But I also run the risk of running into someone older that can't um and that's that's a big one and that's why we're doing what we can to practice the social distancing uh obviously super high on sanitizer washing our hands cleaning up all the time being careful not touching our face eyes nose things like that mm -hmm. but there's only so much you can do and i think it's really important to not live out of fear and to really just continue preparing like we our training as much as it's like shifted or changed the focus is still the same uh, and the intentionality is even more so now. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of speaking of that, you know, it's like, I know for me personally, my um, just my personal goals have changed because I don't know what tomorrow is going to look like, right. Or what the next day is right. going to look like. So it's like, I can't make a goal for two weeks from now and be like, all right, I'm going to like chase that. Cause it's like, cause it could, you know, things could be totally different. Um, right. Have you, have you, you know, you touched on it, but have you noticed your goals change at all? Just maybe on a daily basis? Yeah, I think so. I think my training goals change a bit in terms of what I want to accomplish in the day, uh, which is very simple. Just, you know, it's not as much now about making times or amount of repeats, but it's more <laughs> focused on creating a larger amount of fatigue and then focus on recovery. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, now that Mission Viejo has been canceled, I my focus shifts to Indy, if that's right. still going, you know, so like we focus on Indy and if Indy changes, then we focus on trials or we focus on a last chance meet or whatever's next. Um, and so, you know, my times shift around a bit. But other than that, I mean, we're just taking it one day at a time, one week at a time. And um, I mean, I've been pretty, I've been trying to be active. Like I don't watch the news ever. Like I feel like the news is a pretty toxic place. Um, and a lot of negative things are being said, uh, whether it's fake news or not. So as far as that goes, I've followed a little bit more on the whole coronavirus thing and the updates that President Trump's been putting out and just trying to stay at least in the loop and knowing what's up. And so we'll see what happens after this next, like, I think it's what we're on 13 more days of like their um, uh, was like recommended self quarantine, just being safe. And right. so we'll see. Yeah. I'm just prayerful that, you know, domestic travel doesn't shut down completely, although most flights are being canceled anyway. Um, yeah. like even like my girlfriend, as she was flying home, she said there were like 10 people on the flight and everybody was forced to sit in their own row and like move around. Like, it's just like weird. Like, what right. are we doing? So, yeah, it's 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 an intense time. It's very bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> what takeaways did you have from the movie Contagion? Oh, gosh. Um <laughs> well let's see so it's really one thing that's really interesting is it started in hong kong and it started through bats and then through a pig which is similar oh, to some of the stuff in this yeah, and then yeah. um i don't know i mean the disease is very different but for me i think the biggest takeaway is just being very cautious in what you're touching and where your hands go in terms of your body because it can spread super easily i mean it's contagion's a joke like it's i mean a movie and so, you know, they were dying in hours and this isn't the case. And I mean, as sad like it is, like my condolences go out to everyone that has been affected by the coronavirus and who's, you know, either I know there's uh, the majority of the people that are being affected are the seniors, like older people. And mm -hmm. so it is sad and it is scary, uh, especially for people that may have health issues. But I think for me, just watching Contagion and stuff, I don't know if we really learn much. Maybe it, I think it more just puts a little bit of fear, like an unnecessary amount of fear, because it's like, oh, my gosh, like you can picture it and then your mind runs wild with those thoughts. And right. so I'm just doing what I can to take my thoughts captive and to realize, you know what, it's not as bad as we think, um, but we need to be cautious and take it seriously. Because I think I was definitely one of the people in the beginning where I was like, OK, like this is ridiculous. It's going to blow over. Everything will be fine. You know, I'm not going to change my regular schedule. But that's not the case. And yeah. so, so it's, it's definitely, you know, better late than never.
but it's uh, one of those things that we're taking seriously and just making sure we're being smart. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What, what do you feel has been helpful to you the last few days that maybe um, you, you didn't realize, you know, was, was a tool that you can use? Ooh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's any new tools. It's interesting because I've already been so active in surfing and things like, I mean, I haven't surfed in a few weeks because I've been so busy training in the pool and like getting focused on the two I am and such. But now that I, you know, lose the pool, I'm like, okay, you know, I've got the ocean. And so I think it, it definitely with all of this, it's made me more grateful kind of for the things that I do have outside of it, like my alternatives. I think I started to take a lot of those things for granted, even living here for so such a short time. It's like easy to just like, oh, the ocean, like, yeah, it's awesome. But, you know, you can miss it here and there. And yeah. now that I'm back in the water today, it's like, gosh, I love being in the water. Like, I love the ocean. I love surfing. And so there's there's things there, which is cool. Um, unfortunately, it has to happen this way. But, but definitely realize, you know, we've got so many things in place. We have our home gym. We've got a ocean we've got boards we've got wetsuits like we can stay fit and stay healthy um and that's that's just kind of a big takeaway for me yeah definitely so Crazy. would you rather be in in your current living situation that or would you rather be back in lawrence with your home pool i would much rather be here yeah no i <laughs> i mean lawrence is nice because you can <laughs> stockpile guns and do your thing yeah, you know, California gun laws are a little harder, <laughs> but I, uh, no, you know, Kansas is great, probably safer there if anything does go crazy, but no, I, I don't think we're missing out anything with not having a pool for a short period of time. Um, mm -hmm. I'll just, I'll come back stronger. I'm fully confident in it. Yeah. yeah. Do you, are, are, have you been inspired to do anything you normally wouldn't do? You know, a lot of businesses are shutting down. Have you, you know, yeah. tried to get some online shopping in to support local businesses? <laughs> you know, something like that. Um, something you've yeah. tried to be proactive, maybe outside of swimming. Um, I've given it thought. I haven't really, I mean, there's not a whole lot we need in this time, which is, uh, I mean, a nice place to be in. Like, we feel blessed that we don't need to uh, go out and do anything, but it is sad like we're hearing things about like our local coffee shops and stuff that are you know they have these multiple buildings that they're paying you know crazy amounts of money a month just to stay in and mm -hmm. they've got nobody that can come in you know yeah. so it's like how do they how do they cope with this and those are things that could potentially put them out of business just in this short season and um yeah it is scary i haven't been fortunate enough to you know help out much yet i have been thinking a bit about um using my platform to kind of, I don't know, ease, ease the tension in the air, whether it's show people how I'm training outside of the pool or to give a little encouragement um, mm -hmm. or even do like starting to do race analysis on my videos. People can still learn stuff. Um, Cause I think that's one thing that's interesting is people don't need to, we don't need to completely stop our lives. Like we can continue to learn. We can continue to communicate and figure things out so that when we get back in the pool, we can try and implement it. Um, and so if I can use my platform to encourage people in that, that'd be awesome. And I think that's something I'm going to start working on, uh, get some YouTube videos out soon. And then, I don't know, other than that, we've been speaking to some doctor friends of ours, and it might be worth, uh, you know, educating myself more on what the coronavirus is and how it's kind of spreading, and then mm -hmm. see if there's an application to sharing that with my platform and saying like, okay, there's some things here that maybe we haven't heard mainstream media yet. And it's worth looking into just to be safer and be more cautious. Yeah. Um, but that it's all in the works. Just being yeah. a good steward of what we've got. Yeah, definitely. Um, cool, man. I mean, is it any, any closing thoughts? Closing thoughts. Um, Nothing really. I think my biggest thing is just for for the athletes that are being affected, I think it's really important for us to do everything we can to shift our perspective and not get caught up thinking doom and gloom. Uh, I think it's really easy to because the media is very, it's very much a dark place very often. And so it's up to us to intentionally say like, you know what, 
we're going to stay in shape. We're going to focus on this. We're going to focus on the things we can control. And I think that's really important. And on the other end, it's also, you know, we start thinking, okay, what if the Olympics is canceled? You know, what do we do if those major meets that most athletes have been training their entire life for mm-hmm. is put to a stop or postponed or even like the selection criteria has changed? It's like, yeah, you'll feel robbed. But as hard as it is to understand, we have to realize like we we are put here on Earth for something greater than just swimming in the Olympics. Um, we have to be able to find good in a dark situation and realize that it doesn't define us um, and do our best to kind of roll with the punches as hard as it sounds and as crappy as it sounds it's it's life and it goes on so that's that's what we got to do yeah Yeah, that's that's kind of my my closing statement is just keep on keeping on and um i don't know if, if any athletes have suggestions for my videos or want to hear stuff or maybe i'll start doing more instagram lives just to try and be a little more entertaining in this in this time um you know they know where to go michael Andrew on youtube summer michael on instagram and uh yeah we'll see him around awesome well thanks a lot for your time michael my pleasure